Hey guys, so here's a quick video on how to set up the JWT validation policy in API Manager uh, in the AnyPoint platform. Okay, so I'm going to jump around here a little bit, um, but let's start first with the uh, system that we're going to use to generate the, um, the, the JWT token as well as use to um, uh, be the JWKS server that we're going to, to validate that, that token against. So we're using Auth0. Um, you can sign up for a free account and kind of play around and set up the, you know, your own applications here to test against. Um, there's a lot of things over here on the side, but the key things that we're going to leverage are the APIs. And we're just going to leverage the, the one that comes out of the box, um, the Auth0 Management API, as well as uh, the application section. So these are just the, the two main areas that we'll need to kind of play around with uh, within to, to kind of test out and, and demonstrate the uh, the, the JOT validation policy. So um, I'll come back to this. Uh, in terms of the API that we're going to be applying this policy to, I've gone ahead and already set up an API. Um, I went to API Designer, created the RAML specification, and it's just a simple API where I'm going to make a request to users and then just get a, a, a user example back um, You know, from, from that API call, that REST call. Um, within the platform here, we can see on the left, once you click on policies, we can go ahead and apply that policy. Um, it's under, of course, JWT validation. I've gone ahead and selected the, the latest and greatest one. Um, let's go ahead and look at that policy really quick. Okay, so in here, this is where you can go ahead and apply the JWT validation policy. Um, it's going to ask you where the origin of that JOT token is going to be. We're going to say that it's in the bare authentication header or in the header that we pass into the request. Um, the signing method is going to be RSA, so where we can kind of see the, the correlation there. Within uh, your uh, account that you sign up for Auth0, you can make a call to this specific URL and also see the signing method. So this is RS-256. So that RS corresponds to the RSA. And then the signing key length, of course, is 256. So RSA-256. For the key origin, um, we're going to use JWKS, and we're going to point it to that URL. So when you sign up for an account, you're going to give it um, you know, a, a name. So this is you know, my... my uh, my my handle dot auth zero dot com dot well known forward slash jwks dot json, so it's going to validate that jot against the server uh, to verify that it's it's valid, and then uh, in addition here I've gone ahead and just check skip client ID validation for now. I'm going to validate the audience claim, but you can turn on and turn off some of these validations here. Um, be sure to check the validation policy. Um, documentation for just some more information around some of those uh, additional uh, validation settings that you can set up within the policy okay okay so within the policy coming back over here uh, once you click on apply there are some changes that you need to make to your raml specification in order for this to work correctly right um, you know most APIs that you'll be designing will of course be in RAML 1.0. So you just need to copy and paste these following snippets into your RAML specification. And then for any resource or method that's going to be leveraging the, the JOT validation policy, you need to put a is um, JWT, right? Or that specific trait within that specific resource. So we come back to designer here real quick. We can see that I went ahead and pasted in uh, that specific trait, right? And then also down here within this method for the get method, um, I have that is um, the jot. Okay. Okay. So once that's set up, I've gone ahead and deployed that. It is up and running. If we try to hit that now without passing in the jot token, it's going to say that the jot token is required. Okay. So um, coming back over to Auth0 in here. What we're going to go ahead and, and kind of set up here, you can create a new application, right? We'll just use the machine to machine app. Um, additionally, we're going to select an API that we're going to, um, you know, uh, pass this to. Uh, for scopes, we're going to select all of them for now. You can only select a couple if you want. Uh, and then we're going to authorize this app to, you know, um, communicate, uh, you know, validate that specific API. So down here, 
Uh, you can see that it gives you a, a curl request. This is where you can go ahead and generate that access token, right? So I've actually just um, copied this specific URL into Postman over here. And then in addition, I've also um, pasted the body of the data that we need to pass in. So we pass in the client ID, the client secret, the audience, and the grant type. And once you make that request through Postman, it's gonna go ahead and generate the access token. So you need this, this is the token that you need to pass to the API uh, to, to be validated before you can actually um, access the underlying API. Um, some other things to point out here. So you need to set the, the header to content type application JSON. And then this is a post request. And then that's gonna go ahead and generate uh, the token for you. The client ID and client secret, of course, if you're going back to auth zero, that corresponds to the um, the application. So if we go look at the application here in Auth0, here are the client ID and client secret that you need to pass in. So we can actually copy and paste these into that client ID and secret uh, and make the request. And it's gonna give me a new access token. And let's go ahead and copy this specific access token down. And then for the request to the API now, um, what we need to do here, so this is the, the endpoint that we were calling earlier, right, from, from Chrome. Um, this is the endpoint test API with, uh, with Jot, you know, API users. So in here, um, in the headers, we just wanna make sure within Postman that you're gonna go ahead and use a bearer token and then for the token, let's just go ahead and paste the token that was generated previously. And then when we click on send, it's gonna go ahead and make the request and then you know successfully return back the data from the API, okay? Um, so hopefully that gave you a good overview of setting up the, the JOT validation policy uh, within the platform. Um, as you can see, it does require you to have a, a JWKS server to kind of validate that specific uh, token against. Uh, but it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out or leave a comment. I'm here to help.